right. This weekend it's Portland, Oregon's Art in the Pearl Art Show, and I'm looking forward to introducing you to one of my neighbors. First, we'll just see what it's looking like here. It's this beautiful show. Uh, some of the best artists from around the country. And today, we're going to cross the street and meet Mr. Theodore Gall, sculptor. He has some amazing work and he's going to tell us a little bit about it. All right, Ted. It's good to be your neighbor. Good morning, thank you. Uh, could you tell us Same. a little bit about your work because it's really, really some amazing. Thank you. Uh, the, the work that I do is uh, articulated. They all, they uh, function. They actually work. They're, they're hinged. They have stories going on inside of them. They're cast bronze, lost wax castings, and the, all the coloring is due to patinas, so they're acid patinas. It's not paint, they're very involved. I've been a sculptor for uh, 50 years. Yeah, and how has your work evolved over that time? Where did you start? Well, uh, the, the, piece, the work that I started originally was all welded, were welded forms. And uh, I would uh, do primarily things that were from two feet to over life size. And did that for maybe 10 years or so, 10, 12 years. And then I moved out to California and I met up with a, uh, a foundry. I had never done any casting before. And at that time I was starting to sell uh, more work than I could do. And you know, they were one of a kind kind of sure. things. And so I decided to try something else. I, uh, you know, I started working in wax and started developing pieces and casting them in bronze. And and uh, in doing so, I came up with something tricky. I, I do uh, molds of a piece of a figure, and then I can use that same figure in different situations. Because what I'm really doing is telling stories with my work. It's not necessarily doing one heroic figure. It might be using one figure that I can use for many different things. You know, and I can cut them apart and redo them, and uh, so they become very narrative. Everything I do is narrative and stories. But, and the stories really seem to resonate with the crowd. I mean, your your uh, space is, is typically one of the most crowded that uh, I see when, when I'm doing shows. And with good reason, I think the stories uh, people are fascinated with, the articulation is very cool. I mean, on the surface, they're, they're awesome forms to begin with. But then when well, all of a sudden they... Uh, do their thing it's even crazier it's kind of a, an example uh, in uh, most of the work that I do is pretty psychological too you know and in this case it, this could be called an image factory it's where we're talking about a person and all these are metaphors of, for different ways that he could change so this may represent uh, maybe more intelligent more caring more loving and this woman is deciding well let's try this on my husband or, or whoever and bring up and try him and see how it works and it's constant you know, and the layers keep changing and changing and do we get finally in the inside and here maybe we're narrowing in now that maybe these are the two elements that are going to be used and and it's actually at this point it's like the elements that are starting to communicate with each other. You see here it becomes like a, a conversation of faces, you know. Of, uh, well, that's just tremendous. Yeah, thank you. It's a well, well thought out and the execution is, is really flawless. Um, and it, it, predominantly you choose to do uh, sell your work through shows directly to your no. collectors or, or not? No, that's a nice question. I mean, when I did start, there were probably galleries that I wanted to get into, but I wasn't really equipped for it yet. You know, I wasn't ready and, uh, you know, wasn't good enough. And the galleries were elitist galleries in Chicago. Uh, so I started doing art fairs, which is kind of a bastardly way to do it. <laughs> and uh, But you've got to be a hard worker. And, and I ended up making... Uh, make a nice name for myself and making a good amount of money but it but it again it was working hard working hard sure. and, and as uh, as you go along I mean as every artist knows now that you can probably do three or four shows a weekend if you could divide yourself up but uh, to, the, the idea is to, to select good shows so now I'm down to the point that I do maybe uh, seven shows a year at the most no more than that and that's just outside shows and I'll do shows uh, through the galleries that represent me and through venues like uh, Sofa in Chicago and New York and, you know, larger uh, indoor shows. So over the years, it's graduated to the point where I, I sell my work in different areas. Well, that's, that's uh, it is interesting to hear how different artists approach it differently. Uh, and there, there's a fit for everyone, but the commonality seems to be, as you pointed out, uh, not different than any, any other success you're going to find is you have to work at it. 
you got to show up and you have to do the work. Got a work ethic, you're going to do right. it. Yeah, that's um, a big story. I'd like to take a look at some of your bigger pieces outside before we finish up here because they're just really captivating. Yeah, well, an in, in example of size, I mean, look at this one. If you see these photos down here, this is a, the, if you look at, at these pieces, that was, that was all derived from uh, doing a show in Coconut Grove, Florida many years ago. And I met uh, Mr. George Barber, who was the owner of the museum. He was building it at the time. And uh, he had bought a smaller piece like this, okay? Sure. And, and George says, well, what do you think? Can we make it larger? So I started doing drawings for him, and uh, I made drawings for where it would be six foot tall, and he said, nope, let's make it bigger than that. So I finally ended up that the pieces were 13 feet tall and 18 feet long. And just through a, a conversation with him on one day, and uh, you know, having a nice rapport with the guy, this project ended up taking me almost two years to do. Wow. You know, I mean, each one of them weighs 3,000 pounds, and, uh, and they all had to be shipped from Ojai, California, down to Birmingham, Alabama, and, it, you know, all of it was a, a project. So you, you just really never know where you're going to get your business from. That's you know? a lot of bronze. Yeah, yeah. And, you just you know, you start out with a simple kind of communication at an art fair, and all of a sudden it could be a two-year project. So, well, you know, you just... It's a windy yourself. road for sure. Yeah, and this is a this is a new series that I've been working on, and these are called bird houses, and in, in this case, a house of wisdom. And I like being able to marry the form of a piece of architecture with the human form, and psychologically, it it talks about people that have baggage, uh, people that have issues, psychological issues, and they land here and they go into this little kind of cathedral area, and immediately they're cured, and uh, it's presumptuous, but it happens. And this shows by opening that the people in the inside are now without any baggage whatsoever. So well, that's, that's just an example of you know, the cool. stories of them. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Ted, it's, uh, it's been terrific being your neighbor. Well, and, thank you. And yours, yeah. And let's, uh, let's finish up strong, all right? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Thanks a lot, Ted. Thank you.